Hi, I'm here with Dr. Alice Payne, who is an Associate Professor in Fashion at the School of Design at the Queensland University of Technology. Her research centres on environmental and social sustainability concerns throughout textile and apparel industry supply chains. Alice is the co-author of the book, Global Perspectives on Sustainable Fashion, and she's also an award-winning designer who has exhibited in Australia and overseas. Welcome, Alice. Thank you, Amanda. It's so lovely to be here with you. And you. Mm, we were just, um, we just mentioned before we started recording that the last time we did something together was possibly 2011 or 2012 around ethical fashion as well. Hey. <laughs> That's right. So getting up to 10 years ago, lots yeah. changed. Yes. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Any of those sort of ethical fashion events are always so fun, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Yeah. At least we can do it online like this, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are you going and how's, how has your, has your work, has your life been impacted much with the current climate? <laughs> I suppose I'm fortunate in that as a researcher, I can do a lot of my research in this kind of speaking to people. A lot of my research is through interviews, so I can keep, you know, connecting with people in this way. What's harder is that I also um, am a lecturer in fashion design and I have my fourth year fashion design students at the moment that I'm taking through their early stages of their final year. And they're students who will be making and designing and, you know, developing a beautiful runway show at the end of the year. And that's, that's a difficult thing to work through when you don't have access to, you know, the, the studio equipment that you use when you work in an environment where you want to connect with other students. Um, so that's been, uh, I think it's less of an impact for me and more of an impact for the students who um, my role is to work with and guide through this year. So that's been really hard, I suppose, to, to, to find a way through that for them. Oh, I can imagine. Gosh, I've always loved those shows. I, um, I think when I used to, used to model with Vivians, we would always get that show at the end of the year and it was always so fun working with the, with the designers and seeing the whole show come to life at QUT each year. Yeah, it's, it's a transformative thing for a young designer. And I think every designer out there would remember the time they saw their clothes on the runway for the first time and they saw their whole kind of creative vision come to life. So, yeah, it's a very special year for them. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope that things get to a point where they can at least be in the studio making things and, um, yeah, have that one-on-one -on -one support in person. In person, and I think we're what we're constantly remind one, ourselves of um, amongst the team as well is that you know these kinds of um, constraints people are facing they also prompt and drive creative solutions and they prompt other ways of thinking and fashion is as much about ideas and imagery and imagination as it is about real tangible clothes so there's a lot of designing you can do that doesn't have to be stuff that you can hold and wear. Oh, that's such a beautiful point. And so given the, the current state of the world and the, the current crisis that we're in, why do you think fashion revolution is particularly important at the moment? What amazes me about the present moment, I suppose, is um, I, I do a lot of work in supply chains and a project that I've been working on at the moment is been tracking labour issues through 19 different countries around the world. And as part of that project, we, we finished our first deliverable report on the 31st of March. And at that time, we realised that all the supply chain issues that we were looking at, the labour issues of workers who make the clothing, um, those issues are still so present. What, what the coronavirus situation means, though, is that um, their livelihoods and work has been impacted in a completely unprecedented way. So we've seen retail shops close around the world. We have, um, you know, many people watching may work in retail and have, that, have their livelihood been taken away in this, in this moment. Um, but for the, those workers, so in Bangladesh, for example, you know, there's several million garment workers whose, whose jobs have been impacted. Um, Myanmar, Cambodia, 10,000 jobs in the early days of the, of the, of the virus um, were lost just in those early days. The implications of that are so huge. Now, when we think of fashion revolution, we think of, you know, the ethics and we think of the environmental. And I think what this virus highlights is that is the paradoxical nature of economy, environment and social entwined. So if we stop producing the way we do, we have and, and that and this is what the coronavirus has proven. We have this enormous impact in people's livelihoods. 
it really highlights exactly how wicked the problem is that we have to tackle and fashion revolution is now needed more than ever for that reason. Mm, wicked is a good, good potent word for it, isn't it? Thank you for sharing that with us, that research that you've done and giving us an insight into how this is really, how this current crisis is, is impacting garment workers all around the world and how that's really accelerated the need for, for this work. Thank you for the work that you do and it's so important as is fashion revolution. Thanks, Alice. Welcome.